If you like After Effects, you're gonna like today's video. Hello everyone, welcome back to Learn How to Edit Stuff. My name is Ian, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at my After Effects setup, what my UI looks like, the plugins that I use, and why I find them useful. I get at least a few messages from you guys every time I show my After Effects UI, asking what plugin that is, or why I have things set up the way I have it set up. So today, we're answering all of those questions. Disclaimer, some of these plugins cost money. But if you've learned anything from my channel, I sincerely hope that it's time is money. And if you spend a little bit of money, you can save a lot of bit of time. A lot of a lot of time. And the other thing you've learned from my channel is that you know that I like it when you smash that thumbs up button. So why don't you go ahead and do that right now before we jump in? I'll wait. No, seriously. You, you do it? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into the After Effects tour. All right, we are in After Effects 2023, and pretty much everything on the left side and like the bottom of the screen here is all default. Nothing crazy going on here. I have some folders that automatically get populated into my new project so I can keep myself nice and organized. But besides that, nothing really crazy going on here. The real magic, at least for me, comes over here on the right hand side. So this is where all of my tools lie and I have everything laid out kind of the way that I use them with each other. And we're gonna go over everything on this side of the screen, plus some secret items down here in my window that I use every once in a while, but we're gonna start over here first. So up here at the top right, I have all of my text panels. So character, paragraph, and a line. So if I ever need to do anything with text, those are just right at the top, easily accessible. I do a lot of animations with text. And so having those panels always kind of there, right at the top, very helpful. Right below that, we have the tracking panels. So for tracker and content aware fill. Underneath that, I have my preview panel and then watchtower and effects and presets. You guys know what effects and presets is. You might not know what watchtower is. So watchtower is a really handy little plugin that allows you to sync any folder on your computer with After Effects. So I'm gonna sync my media folder, for example, where this project is located in my hierarchy. I'm gonna sync that media folder. It's going to automatically bring it into my After Effects project and then populate with these folders. Now, Ian, why is that cool? Because if I add any file to my root folder on my computer, it automatically gets imported into After Effects. So let me show you what I mean. So let's open up that root folder and let's grab a couple AI generations of my dog Goji and let's throw that into the still images folder. And right as soon as I drop them into this folder, which is in my root, I go back to After Effects. It will automatically sync all of those images inside of my After Effects project. So I don't need to be dragging things into After Effects all the time. I don't need to have a bunch of windows open. I don't have to deal with any of that. It just automatically updates. So you add the media to your root folder, automatically goes into the After Effects folder. And by the way, everything that we talk about today, I will drop in the video description below so you can go check it out for yourself. Again, some of them are free. Some of them cost money. You can use it if you want, but Watchtower, huge win for me. Uh, just saves a ton of time. Let's move all the way over to the left and let's start here with Flow. So Flow is basically a keyframe easing editor that's always up and available inside of After Effects. I have all these nice little presets that I can choose from for all of my animations and I can save my own user presets inside of this as well. This is basically the same thing that you can do inside of the graph editor, but it's a little bit more user friendly and a little bit easier to use in my opinion. So let's quickly make a shape layer down here. Let's center it with a line. Look at that, the panels at work. And now let's add a scale keyframe, go over 10 keyframes, another scale keyframe, and then post this up just like so. Now I'm going to highlight those keyframes and just hit apply. I'm on the court preset here, so I'm just gonna click that, hit apply, and it will automatically apply those easing curves to my keyframes, and you can open it up to see in the graph editor. Let's grab another one of these and hit apply, and you see that it changes right here in the graph editor. So essentially, it's just the graph editor, but always up and looks a little bit nicer. And now I have this nice animation here that's just scaling up. So that is Flow. Right next to that is GIF Gun, which has nothing to do with Flow, but I like to export GIFs a lot. And I like to use GIF Gun because it just compresses them, everything looks nice, it's easy to use. We're not really gonna cover it, but go check it out in the description if you'd like more information. So uh, Flow then for me goes straight into Keystone. And Keystone is basically like, a keyframe suite on steroids. You can do so much with this stuff. You can duplicate, you can flip it and reverse it like Missy. You can align keyframes, you can stagger keyframes. You can do so, so much here. And I'm not gonna go into an in-depth tutorial on how to use Keystone. Again, I'll provide information down in the description for you. But basically the way that I use it and the most simple way to explain this and how much time it saves is reversing animation on keyframes. So I have this nice thing that we just did with Flow. Let's say I want it to scale up and then scale out again. 
Normally, what I used to do was I would like copy this keyframe, paste, go over 10 keyframes, copy it and no, don't do that. Okay, we're gonna reverse, reverse. And all I'm gonna do is highlight these two keyframes, go up here and click the duplicate and flip button. And it's going to automatically do that for me and then reverse the easing as well. And so now I have this nice duplicated scale animation that I didn't have to like copy and paste keyframes. That just gets so annoying. Keystone, absolute double thumbs up from me, by the way. Uh, I don't know what I would do without it, seriously. Next to Keystone, we have Swiss Knife. And Swiss Knife, the only reason that I got this plugin, it does a lot. It does a lot of things and a lot of very valuable things, but I got it specifically because it will distribute your layers evenly and automatically so that you can do parallax 3D with just the click of a button. Super cool, check this out. I'm gonna duplicate my shape layer here uh, a bunch. Highlight those layers, come right up here to Parallax 3D, and you can see that there's a couple different options when you click on that button. I'm gonna hold down Alt and click, which is going to equally distribute those 3D layers based on their layer index. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This one will be on the top, this one will be in the back. That's exactly what I want. Alt, click on Parallax 3D. It will automatically create a camera and all the parallax, and it looks like nothing's changed. But then as soon as I go to the Orbit Camera tool, you can see that like all of those layers are distributed in 3D space. And so if you're doing any sort of like animation uh, Swiss Knife is a very, very handy plugin, and you can also do fake parallax 2D as well. You can do layer stacking. Uh, it just comes in handy when you need to do that specific task. I don't do that kind of stuff all the time, but when I do need to do it, it just takes all of the guesswork out of doing something like that. It evenly distributes all of my layers. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not like fidgeting with scaling or anything like that. Another double thumbs up for me. That's gonna be a pretty common theme here in this video. Double thumbs up. You smash that thumbs up button twice if you can because I would, I would really appreciate it. Let's move on to Smart Rect. Okay, so Smart Rect is a Euchre Media plugin that basically just runs a script when you have a text layer. So let's just do a text layer real quick. Amazing, I'm going to center it in my composition using my handy panels over here. And basically what I'm gonna do is tell Smart Rect to create an auto scale rectangle around my text that will automatically scale depending on what I type in. You can increase or decrease the padding so you can get this nice like border around your text that will automatically kind of like do stuff with the text. So let's do that real quick. Let's go to margin. Let's turn everything here to 40 pixels, go back to size, and we have to turn on a couple different options here. So we are going to parent to the selected layers and we are going to turn on apply auto size expressions as well. So both of these things I like to have uh, clicked on when I do this, and I'm gonna click right in the center to center the anchor point of that layer behind and it will automatically add the shape layer behind my text layer. And since it's parented to my text layer, it's going to follow it everywhere it goes. And I can type in something completely new here. And that box is going to automatically scale for me so that I don't have to do any guesswork. Again, saving a significant amount of time. One of the biggest wastes of money is wasting your time and like copying and pasting scripts and expressions and like trying to figure it out, just get the plugin, right? Like I just saved myself a whole bunch of time and I can repeat that over and over. And so that time saving is going to come compound over time, thus saving you the amount of money that you would pay to get this thing in the first place. And it's not very expensive. Again, information in the description below. Let's move on. That concludes this little top middle panel here. Let's move straight down to, uh, let's do type first. So type is just a really handy little plugin that allows you to do different typing animations. That's usually a huge pain in the neck. So I'm gonna come down here, add another text layer. And basically what I'm gonna do is just click this little typewriter button and it's going to automatically add the typewriter animation to my text. And I have nice little handy controls here that are a lot easier to control than the default After Effects animation with a whole bunch more utility, right? So if I wanted to add a blink cursor, I can do that as well. I can change the color of said cursor. Let's maybe make it white. Zoom in here so we can see what we're doing. Let's make it a little bit thicker and a little bit shorter, right? Okay, that's way too thick and maybe too short. But anyway, it will automatically add that cursor to my text layer so that I don't have to do more work. It just takes all the work out of it. Let's shrink that animation time down, boom, 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 boom. And it's gonna blink that cursor nicely right at the end of my text animation. And I didn't have to do anything other than click a couple of buttons. There's more buttons here for me to click as well. If you wanted to highlight the text, you can click on this little highlighter and it will automatically add a highlight layer to that text. So if you do a lot of text animations or typing animations, type is gonna be a really handy tool to have in your arsenal. You can do automatic underlining, strike throughs, uh, put rectangle around the text, convert things to like a timing rig. There's a lot of little cool things that you can do with this UI and it's super, super handy because I do a lot of text animations. So again, saving a bunch of time and let's move on to the last panel that we have available, which is After Ease and Coco Color Library. So Coco, we're gonna start here because I'm already on it. Coco is just really amazing. You can save brand colors. So I have all of my run 
one-way brand colors just kind of like already in this panel. So if I wanted to get rid of this and let's get rid of this and let's come to my text layer and I say, oh cool, I wanna make it the runway purple or the runway you know, blue or whatever. I have all of my pre-approved brand colors right inside of this panel. And I can also go to color palettes and gradients and all of these things. And I can explore all the various color palettes that they already have available. And there's like thousands and thousands of these. So if you wanted just to have like really nice colors across different layers, it kind of automatically does a lot of the work for you. And you can save custom palettes in your library as well. So this is a really, really handy tool. And basically the way it works is that you just add it, it automatically applies to the layer, and then it just puts it in the form of a fill on that layer. So if you ever needed to go back to the original color, you can just delete that cocoa layer right off of there, apply a new one, and it just adds that cocoa fill preset right on the layer. So super, super handy. Uh, really, really love this plugin. Don't really think I need to say anything more about it, just really nice to have. And the last panel that I wanna to cover today is After Ease. And After Ease is just a really great way to add like a little bit more dynamics to your animations. So I'm gonna make a square here, align it to the center. You know me, baby. Let's do a scale animation. Go five keyframes over. Let's go back to the first keyframe, set that to zero. And we're gonna use flow as well. So court, apply. And now I have this really nice uh, scale animation on this square layer here. But what I want it to do is I want it to bounce. And so I'm going to highlight these keyframes here, come over to after ease, go to bounce or elastic. I like to use elastic. And I'm gonna turn these little sliders here to adjust the decay and the frequency of that animation. If I went all the way down on decay and I went all the way you know, over here on frequency and hit the expression button, it's going to apply this expression to that animation animation, and it's basically never gonna stop moving. <laughs> it's just gonna like constantly bounce like that. Uh, but what I could do is I could, you know, increase the decay a little bit, maybe bring down the frequency. Now I hit the expression button and it does this nice little finishing animation uh, entirely on its own. And I can also bake that expression into keyframes as well. So just by highlighting these keyframes, go to bake, it will add a bunch more keyframes onto that animation so you can actually see what it's doing. And of course, you can come to the keyframe editor and look at that curve so you can also see what it's doing here. But yeah, this is just a really nice way to add like a little bit more dynamic movement to otherwise stale animations. Uh, with just a couple clicks of a button. Again, saving a bunch of time. I'm not gonna wanna figure this out. I'm not gonna wanna do math. I don't wanna look at like the gravity bounce graph. I don't wanna do any of that stuff. I just wanna make things that look cool and are pretty. And that's what all these plugins do. They save a bunch of time and they help you out at the end of the day. So those are all the panels that we've covered. Now the secret sauce in the window menu. Let's take a look at some of that stuff. So first of all, uh, one of my favorite things that isn't shown directly here is FX Console by Video Copilot. Uh, you just hit Control Spacebar and you can search for anything in After Effects like you would on a computer. So if I wanted to put like a gradient, right? I can just do gradient ramp right on that layer and it will automatically apply the gradient ramp plugin. Uh, if I wanted to apply something crazier like a camera shake plugin or something, uh, I can just search that here camera shake, uni uh, Red Giant Universe camera shake. I love that one. I can apply it right from this menu as well. So it's just a really nice way to get to all the things inside of After Effects very, very quickly and easily. So again, uh, FX Console by Video Copilot. It is free and all you gotta do is hit Control Spacebar with a layer selected. And you can take screenshots and do other stuff here too. Very, very handy. Now, coming up to Window. Let's come down here, Decompose Text. I use this one a lot. Uh, and mainly what I use it for is when I have a text layer, right? If I'm trying to do some sort of text lockup. So I have my text, it looks really nice and I have it composed exactly how I want, but I want to animate each line of text sliding in from the left side of the frame. I'm gonna use Decompose Text. And what Decompose Text is going to do is it will automatically separate these text uh, lines by character, word, or line. So in this case, I wanna do separate by lines, hit decompose, and it will break this up into three individual layers. Let's close that real quick. It will break this up into three individual layers. So now I can just do very quick animations. So let's do text, right? Sliding in from the top over here, boom. And it retains the composition of the original alignment and all of that stuff, but it allows you to animate each one of these lines individually, thus saving you a bunch of time because now you don't have to like fiddle with individual layers or like duplicate and then like lower the opacity and try to line it up. None of that. That's annoying. Decompose text is not annoying. I think it's free. I'm not really sure. Info down below, but yeah, decompose text. I use it all the time for very simple things that take a long time for whatever reason. So this is one of those huge time-saving things. Uh, what else we got in the window panel? Let's see, let's see. Uh, Gift gum, we already talked about. Lock properties. Okay, so lock properties is a pretty good one. I actually think that that's the last 
thing we're gonna go over. True comp duplicator is pretty cool, but we're not really gonna get into it. It doesn't matter. All right, anyway, so lock properties. Uh, let's delete all of my text layers here, and let's go back to my original composition here, and let's open up the position parameter and right click and go to separate dimensions. If I never want this text layer to go above or below this exact point on the Y axis, I can use the lock properties plugin, which I think is free. God, I don't know. Oh, I think it's free. I wanna say it's free, not really sure. Might be free, might not be free. But anyway, click on the Y position, come over here to window and go to lock properties. And now you can lock the selected property. In this case, it is the Y axis. Let's click the lock button. And now it will not allow me to drag this any higher or lower on the Y axis, but it will allow me to continue to drag it on the X axis. So this is just a really nice way to make sure that things don't get out of whack if you don't want them to be. If you have an animation that only moves on the X axis, lock the Y. The reverse of that, if it's only moving on the Y, lock the X so that it doesn't fall off of that line and it just keeps everything nice and tight and organized. That's what we like here on Learn How to Edit Stuff. That's what you should be liking out there in your world, whatever world that's in. Uh, and we all like saving time and thus saving money. And that has been this presentation of my After Effects layout, UI panels, and the plugins that I use and why I find them useful. <sighs> Whew. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. What else I would appreciate is if you smash that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, drop a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you thought of this video. Did you learn something new? Do you have some of these plugins already? Are you gonna go out and get some of them? Information in the video description below. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. It's good to be back and I will see you in the next one.